Ortha. Welcome to Oxford Scugog Life. I'm your host, Jackie Hermans. So, have you been involved with any of the excitement in Durham? We have a shooting of a horror movie called Thanksgiving. Patrick Dempsey is in it. And have you watched the show Suits? You know that quirky character, Lewis? Uh, we caught sight of him in town. Uh, a TikTok uh, famous girl, uh, Addison Ray, was in town. I know parking was a little bit challenging uh, for a couple of days, but hey, I think it's worth it. Down the streets of Port Perry, you're able to watch a super cool parade. <laughs> this, this street was transformed into Thanksgiving. We had people coming in, am I a time? Uh, people coming into the bank that I work at saying, am I am a time in a time warp here? What's going on? So yeah, we have a really cool movie shoot going on and that's continuing in the Durham area. So we have an exciting show that is going on today. So I'm talking to Chris Ferg, who is co-founder of Durham Distillery. Also, Purple Woods is on the show, talking about the Maple Syrup Festival. And we're also talking about Durham Farm Connections and their open house that is coming up on April the 5th. So make sure you keep on watching because we got a whole lot of fun happening on Oxford Skewgog Life. We'll be back. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. We can be hurt. We can be bruised. We can be broken. Slowed down, confused, and even numbed. But we can't be defeated. We're built on a foundation that's strong. Our mission, unwavering. And together, we'll... Beat as one. Hey, what's good, everybody? I'm Kareem Grant, a former professional football player. Do you want to know what current and former professional athletes are up to these days? Catch the Player's Corner with Kareem Grant exclusively on Rogers TV. Welcome back to Oxford Scoo God Life. Have you heard of the Durham Distillery? Well, I am here with Chris Ferg, who's the co-founder of the Durham Distillery. How are you? Very good, thank you for having me. Well, it's so great to have you on the show. I met you at the LCBO, and um, you were giving out samples of your vodka and your gin. And uh, the vodka was very delicious. I, I didn't try the gin, <laughs> so I'm sure that is just as delicious. It's great to have you on the show. Now, I wanted you to share your story with the, with the community. So I understand that the corporate world drove you to drink, or <laughs> drove you to distill, I should say. How, how did this all come to be? Um, so I always kind of view that question as a twofold question. One is like, well, how did I decide to be an entrepreneur? And the second was, how did I end up on distilling? Okay. And the answer to the first one was actually the birth of our our first child, our son Hudson. <clears throat> when he was born, I remember looking at him in the birthing suite and thinking, at some point he's gonna come to me and ask me, what do I do and do I love it in my date when I'm leaving the house every day and not with them? And I didn't have a great answer to that. <clears throat> so I decided from that point forward, I needed to live the lifestyle that I wanted our children to follow, which was to follow their dreams and do things. So from there, I ended up discovering uh, distilling through a show called Moonshiners on the Discovery Network. And I thought, wow, wouldn't this be super cool just to make alcohol and create a brand and, and really create all these spirits and create things like our patio lanterns, vodka, or the London Calling Dry Gin, which you would have had at the LCBO in Uxbridge. Okay, very cool. So 
how did you, you didn't know anything about distilling. How did you learn? Yeah, I'm a big kind of jump off the cliff, figure out the parachute guy. So <laughs> I ended up uh, reaching out to a friend of mine who's the other co-founder uh, and saying, hey, do you want to just make moonshine? And he's like, absolutely, what do we need to do? So then at that point, I reached out to the three other craft distilleries in Toronto. Uh, and one could see us that weekend, which was Don and the team at Last Straw Distillery. And I ended up apprenticing there for two years on the weekend. So on top of having a uh, corporate job that required me to travel downtown three hours uh, a day, plus uh, two children under the age of four, I was then spending 16 hours on a Saturday and a Sunday learning to distill from the grain up and, and how to do all of this. Wow, and you're still married. I have the most amazing wife in the world. I can't, uh, I can't say that enough. I also consider her to be one of the co-founders of the distillery with me because without her and her support and, and helping me and our children, it wouldn't be possible without her. Wow. All right. So just note to the viewers out there, next time you're drinking uh, some of the some Durham distillery booze, you should do thank you to Erica for, <laughs> for making this a possibility. So I understand you have won some awards. Yeah, we, uh, I've now won seven national awards through two major competitions. So our Wheat Kings Vodka won a silver medal uh, last year and our London Calling Dry Gin won a bronze medal, both in the uh, Canadian Spirits Artisan Award. So uh, us with every other craft distillery in Canada. And then our first two whiskey releases, uh, a Home for a Rest uh, Canadian Whiskey and Harvest Moon Canadian Whiskey won five medals this year across the Canadian Whiskey Awards, which is us against every other international or national uh, distillery that releases a Canadian whiskey, and then also in the Canadian Artists and Spirits Awards. Okay, how are you choosing the names? Of, uh, of your um, so I like to choose musical names because they take me back to moments in time. Um, and when I think about, or when we thought about, uh, when we started the company, we thought about like, how are we enjoying spirits? We were really enjoying them listening to music with friends. So on a patio, around a campfire, around a bonfire. So then I just started picking songs that meant something to us. And then other, those songs happen to connect with other people as well. So Wheat Kings Vodka, Patio Lanterns Vodka, uh, Home for a Rest Canadian Whiskey. A bottle of that actually made it to Jeffrey Kelly, who's one of the co-writers of the song. Nice. Uh, and he was very touched that we picked his song to be our first whiskey release. That's beautiful. You know what? Songs have a particular energy, a particular vibration. So yeah. by choosing a particular song, I think you are infusing that vibration into the bottle. Yeah, I think so right? too as well. I think that's very cool. Yeah. All right, so what are your next steps? You've been doing really well. Do you are how do you want to take this to a new level? So our next level we want to take it to is we want to build this to be one of the premier craft distilleries in Ontario and Canada and become a real premier maker of whiskey in Canada. Yeah. There's a huge market for it overseas. So right now we're out seeking investment uh, of anybody who wants to come be a part of this and wants to help us build this to be a premier whiskey distillery in Canada. Amazing. Okay, so if people come to the Durham Distillery, can you go on a tour? Can you buy the booze right from there? Do you need to get it from the LCBO? How does it, how does it work? Yeah, so you can come visit us at 25 Mill Street in Ajax. We're in old uh, village fire hall there. Um, you can come in, we have a retail store, we have a lot of different flavors there. You'll find our Firehouse Spirits line too, which is my small batch kind of test flavors where we want to see how they, uh, how people react to them. We just released actually yesterday our Citron Vodka, so a nice very lemon flavored vodka mm. for the spring season. Uh, there we can take you on a guided tasting tour, so we'll take you through all of the products. You can understand why we made them, why we've named them the way we've named them, because our names always have a double meaning for us uh, on the when we pick the song names for them. You can find us on Uber Eats all throughout Durham Region, especially in Uxbridge. You, you can, can get booze delivered to you. You can. We have a, <laughs> we have a delivery so pickup point right here in Uxbridge. So you can order there. It's open until 11 p.m. So you can get any of our spirits direct to your door. That is amazing. Booze on, booze on the run. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So what is your website? Uh, you can find us at www.durhamdistillery.ca. All right, and I also found you on Instagram. The, is it Durham Distillery or The Durham Distillery? Uh, the Durham Distillery, because there's two other Durham Distilleries, one in Durham, North Carolina, and one in Durham, England. Okay, so make sure it's The Durham Distillery. Correct. Okay, awesome. So great to have you on the show. And uh, we'll have to have you back, maybe some with Big Red doing some testing. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, we'll be back with more on Oxford Scugog Life.
And so, this organ, which I regret I cannot name, because of the presence of these members of the weaker sex, who, although they are married, could not possibly endure... <laughs> Get them out. This is Ginny. Patience. Get them out! Dr. McFarlane! Mrs. Trout. There's no place for women in a medical school. Yeah. Yeah. Get them out! You do not bring this classroom under control. I am going to repeat every word of this disgusting lecture to your charming wife. My friend Jenny Trout was not the only woman to face this kind of thing in medical school. But she would become the first woman licensed to practice medicine in Canada. Welcome back to Oxford School God Life. So I'm with Kara Gregory, who is with the Conservation Authority. You are the Conservation Education Coordinator. Yes. And you are located at Purple Woods. Yes, yeah, so the festival is at Purple Woods, the Maple Syrup Festival, and it started running uh, up on March break, so the 10th, and uh, it ran for the March break, the week of the March break, and we have it uh, every weekend after that. So the last weekend is April 1st and 2nd for the festival, and in between those dates we do education tours for local schools. Okay, so let's talk about the Maple Syrup Festival. I understand there's different activities that you can get involved with, including eating pancakes with your delicious <laughs> yes. maple syrup. Yes, so we make our maple syrup in our evaporator on site and um, from the trees in Purple Woods. And really popular is the pancake uh, eating with our maple syrup on it. Also, we have uh, Helenda's sausages that have been really popular this year as well with a little bit of maple syrup on them that you can order. Where are Helenda's is are Helenda's Sausages a local yes. meat company or yes. a local sausage company? Yes, yeah? yes. And uh, they've been a big hit this year with everybody. So um, that's at the top of the hill in our Heritage Hall building. And then when you go down um, the path, that goes down, there's a big hill. Um, there's some interpretive information for you to read. And at the bottom of the hill, we have wagon rides. We also have like horse and wagon rides. We have uh, toffee that you can purchase. Um, the maple toffee is really popular. We also have Aunt Peggy's Cabin and the Scugog Shores and Oshawa Museums are there on the weekend uh, at Peggy's Cabin with some different artifacts to talk about the early settlers. And we have a station as well that talks about how the early settlers made uh, the maple syrup and how indigenous uh, peoples made the maple syrup as well. So do you make maple syrup different than how they did Yes. in, in early times? Yes, <laughs> so um, it used to be that the sap was collected in buckets that um, there was a little spile that was put into the tree and it would drip from that uh, tap into the bucket. But we have um, tubes attached to our spiles now and all the tubes, the sap flows down to our sugar shack where we have an evaporator and um, there's a collection in that sugar shack where all the sap gathers and then it flows through uh, our evaporator and gets boiled, it's wood fired and it gets boiled until it gets to 66% sugar. Uh, and then once it gets to 66% sugar, it's filtered and it's ready to be bottled. And we grate it. So we put uh, a sample in, in a little bottle and there's a colorimeter that we use. Um, there's the bottles there just on that table. Okay, so these are the bottles to show the, the color process, like what it's, you're looking for from it's light a to grating. dark? Yeah, it's a, a grating. grating. So okay. golden is the lightest, amber, then dark, and then very dark. And the darker the color, the stronger the maple syrup flavor. And um, the, what's going on your pancakes is the dark. So uh, it's got that really strong maple flavor. And it just depends on the time in the season because the longer it takes to boil to get to the 66%, the darker the syrup's going to be. Mm -hmm. And that depends on how much sugar was in the sap to start with. Because sap's mostly water, uh, it's only about 3% sugar. So it takes about 40 liters of sap to make one liter of maple syrup. 
Okay, so like when wine is made, there'll be certain years of a particular wine at a, at a certain winery that would be a gold medal winner. So do you find with your syrups, oh, 2020 was awesome syrup, but 2019, well, you know, like, do you find that? Well, the length of the season definitely uh, varies from year to year. Um, it's usually around two to three weeks. Um, it can start earlier, can start later. Sometimes it might start in February, sometimes later in March. Um, it just depends on the weather that we're having. It needs to be below zero at night and it has to be above about four degrees in the day to get the sap flowing so that okay. you can uh, have some sap to, to boil. And um, you can't really predict whether it's going to come out, you know, the gold, amber or dark. It just totally depends on what percentage of sugar is in the sap to start with. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Now, you run different events throughout the year. This is yes. not the only event that you have. Right. So what do you have coming up? Um, so this uh, April, um, after the festival's over, which, like I said, the, the first and the second of April, um, on the 15th, we have an uh, amphibian hike at Crows Pass conservation area which is one of our more northern conservation areas and uh, it's in partnership with North Durham Nature and then uh, on Earth Day we have an event at our Bowmanville West Side Marsh uh, conservation area um, where we have a different variety of activities for families to participate in uh, a little bit of tree planting hike uh, if the weather permits, I'm going to bring our education animals. We have uh, a Midland painted turtle and an Eastern garter snake. Uh, uh, what was that? A snake? Yes. <laughs> what kind of snake was that? Eastern, Eastern garter snake. So they're okay. both native animals. Uh, the snake was adopted from Reptilia in Whitby, and uh, the turtle was adopted from uh, the Turtle Trauma Center in Peterborough. Okay, maybe an opportunity to pet them or no? Is yeah, it just, you can, yeah? yeah, you can handle them, yep. Okay, <laughs> very cool. We definitely would like to have you on the show again to talk about any other events that you have coming up. Lots of things for families to do, mm -hmm. learn about nature, right? Yes, definitely. So if you want to go to the festival, you can uh, get tickets online. Okay. Uh, at Cloaker's website, and then um, it's $8 uh, per person, tax included, if you uh, buy it online. If you want to buy it at the door, it's 11 Okay, beautiful. And that website is? Uh, www.cloaker.com. Beautiful. Thank you so much. We'll be back with more on Oxford School Gog Life. <laughs> It's me, Giovanni Patini, the host of the RTV Quiz Show, the hottest show on television. It's the hilarious quiz show where you, the viewers, play for valuable non-existent prizes. It's got great trivia, fun facts, and a lot of laughs, all blended together in a perfect cocktail of edutainment. So join us Wednesdays at 7.30 right here on Rogers TV. Nice. Welcome back to Oxford Scugog Life. I am with Sandra Gibb of, I want to make sure I'm saying this right, Durham Farm Connections. My ear thing is like popping out of my ear. Welcome to the show, Sandra. Thank you. So we're talking about an open house that you have coming up, but first of all, I hadn't heard of Durham Farm Connections before, so there might be some other people in the community that don't know about you guys. So first of all, what are you? What do you do? So 
Durham Farm Connections is a volunteer organization which provides agricultural opportunities for the farm and non-farming community in Durham Region to ensure the viability of the agricultural sector in this area. Okay, so I understand you have different events that are going on, such as the open house, and you also, you have a, a super fun trailer, an event trailer that you can bring around yes. to, to different opportunities. Tell us a, a little bit about that. We have educational programs, such as a primary program and a high school program. We have a mobile exhibit event, of which you can go to fairs or you can book it for local events that might happen in Durham Region, and it provides an exciting agricultural opportunity for people to to learn more about farming. So why do you think uh, Durham Farm Connections is so important? I think it's a great opportunity for us to engage with people who may not have a lot of knowledge about agriculture and hopefully they get a better understanding of what we do in agriculture. Right, maybe be inspired to yes. get into farming yeah. or be an appreciation. Sure, and a right? uh, better understanding of the ed agriculture and the agri-food industry in Durham Region. Okay, so tell me about the open house. The open house is taking place on Wednesday, April 5th from 3.30 to 8 o'clock at the Luther Vibond Arena in, uh, in Brooklyn, Ontario. Okay, so what will be happening at the open house? So it's a free event that brings the farm to town and it's an opportunity to meet local farmers, learn about Durham Region farms and see farm animals and tractors. Okay, very cool. Do you can you sit on a tractor or just get up and close and personal with the tractor? We what? will have some uh, tractors there and people can sit on them. There'll be a farmer or uh, someone who has a knowledge of that tractor will be speaking about the tractor. We'll also be having some uh, activities and demonstrations throughout the event. It will include cheese making, sheep shearing, cow milking, wool spinning. We have a beekeeper coming and you can actually also meet a large animal vet, vet very cool. Now, would would anyone have an opportunity to actually milk a cow or shear a sheep, or is it watching? It's watching for um, safety of those who are attending. The okay. Animals can be a little more skittish or um, nervous around a lot of noise and people okay. when they're not used to that in their farm. Okay. We also are going to have um, displays on urban agriculture and the Durham College uh, Center for Food will also be available at our event. Okay, amazing. Now tell me a little bit more about the primary programs that you have. So the primary program is a fantastic event. It's in its 14th year. It's organized by uh, dedicated volunteers and teachers. And it's a great educational opportunity for grade three students to rotate through eight stations. They have, we have beef cattle, dairy cattle, maple syrup, apple, apple, apple production, egg production, crops, sheep, and vegetables. Okay, that's amazing. Now that primary program, that is that taking place at the open house? No, it's, or is a, it's, a, it's a closed event. And, um, okay. We send invitations out to the schools and uh, teachers register and cannot participate. So it's closed during the day. The open house is open for the general public or anyone who wants to attend. Okay, that's amazing. Now, if there are any schools out there that would like to uh, sign up for the primary program, how do they do that and where does that take place? Um, the registration begins in the fall and um, they sh their school should receive an email with information about the program. Uh, the deadline is mid-January or around that time and then um, each school can um, register for a certain day, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, to participate. Okay. So I guess if they're looking to uh, participate, it's full for this year. The response has been wonderful, but they can uh, watch out for next year's information. Okay, great. Now, does is Durham Farm Connections looking for any volunteers to assist? Sure, we always are welcome uh, volunteers to our events, and we have uh, many things that they could do. Do you need to have farming experience? Um, I would say it helps, but I don't think it's necessary. Okay. Um, I think that if they're uh, willing to learn and uh, find out more about what we do, we would welcome anyone to come and see what we, it's all about. Great. Are, do you tend to focus on a certain age group to assist with, uh, with volunteering? We would, no, we do not. Uh, okay. and just people who want to get more involved and learn more about what uh, farming is all about in Durham Region. How long have you been involved for? 
I have been involved for 10 years. The, I was not on the original uh, committee that uh, is the 14th event, so I've been involved for 10 years. And this is my first year actually chairing the primary program, so a new experience for me, and uh, it's a wonderful group of volunteers. We could not host an event like this without very, uh, very dedicated and loyal volunteers that come and help. What do you love about it? I love that we get to um, speak with people about what we do and share our passion and knowledge about agriculture. Beautiful. That's amazing. I am really grateful to have an opportunity to talk to you to learn more about uh, Durham Farm Connections. And I'm, I think it's fantastic that you have this education out there for the community. Yeah, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. So we'll be back with more on Oxbridge's Cougog Life. It isn't the heavy trays that make the job difficult or the fast pace you need to keep up. It's not working another double because someone called in sick. What makes the job tough is the moment you realize a customer has had enough and you have to make that decision not to overserve. Refusing service isn't personal, it's the law. We know it's not easy, but we're counting on you to keep us all safe. Thank you, servers, for doing the tough job. Hey, I'm Chef Corey Dern, host of a show on Rogers TV, Georgina, called Cooking with Corey. Join me bi-weekly for brand new episodes where I teach you not only what to cook, but how to cook. The only thing missing is smell-o-vision. That's Cooking with Corey, right here on Rogers TV, Georgina. Hi, I'm Angel Morgan, host of Raising Energy on Rogers TV. Join us this week with our live studio audience for psychic readings that are fun and fast-paced just for you. Welcome back to Expert Scugog Life. So thank you so much to the guests that came on the show. Now, Purple Woods, something that we didn't mention is for the little kids in Peggy's cabin, there's going to be some early settlers toys that the little kids can play with. So that's kind of a neat feature that they have going on there. And just to, rem uh, just to remind you, April 5th is the open house for Durham Farm Connections. And if you're wanting to do something neat, you can head over to the Durham Distillery and check out to see what their process is uh, to distill their spirits. And uh, hey, apparently Apparently you can call Uber and uh, get uh, Durham Distillery taken right, brought right to your front door. How about that? So thank you so much for watching. If you want to be on the show, send us an email, life at rci.rogers.com. We'll see you next week. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Leonard Thompson, 13 years old, diabetes mellitus, 65 pounds. Starve the child to let them live. The treatment's as cruel as the disease. It's a death sentence. Dr. Banting. This could be it. He's the first to receive this trial. But will it save him? It's not pure enough. So we try again. And again. <laughs> 